Hi there guys, it's uh, HP Squirrel here bringing you another gameplay. Um, this is of me playing MLG level 50 on a different account called Blame the Game. I go plus 26 with most hill time, so it's pretty decent gameplay. Um, no amazing clips or anything, but hopefully I can bring you a lot better ones in the future, in the few weeks coming, because I've started pulling host and getting quite a few good gameplays. Um, today I want to talk about Halo 4 matchmaking, and um, I'm joined by my brother, HP Angel, so if you just introduce yourself, Hashem. Um, yeah, so guys, I'm HP Angel, uh, my name's Hashem. Since um, Halo, Halo Reach came out, I haven't really been playing Halo much at all, I've just been going from game to game. I did start off on Halo Reach and tried to play it for a month or so, but it didn't really keep hold of me, so I went to Call of Duty, then moved on to Gears of War, and um, yeah, just been bouncing around games. Right, so yeah, you've played loads of different games which have matchmaking systems, so, <clears throat> sorry guys, um, so hopefully you can um, give us an insight into, from all these different games, what have you picked up about them, which is um, quite good about their matchmaking, maybe what's not so good, because all I play really is Halo 3, because I've sort of just been addicted to that and stuck to that. I tried getting into Reach, but without the ranking system, I didn't really fancy it. So, with all these different games you played, what what did you like? Well, yeah, I would say not um, not to comment on any of the gameplay, obviously, but just uh, the technical aspect of like how it puts you into matches and stuff. Um, but I think each series, each of the main franchises at least, have one very good thing about them. For instance, Gears of War has its dedicated servers right now. Um, Call of Duty has just started up their Elite system, um, which is kind of like a Halo chart for Call of Duty, so people can keep um, track of their stats like to a very good detail and also you know, upload videos straight to YouTube from uh, Call of Duty on the game, which I think is a really good cool. addition. And um, hmm. yeah, so... Um, in comparison to the Halo 3 um, matchmaking engine, I would say no game has really come close to making, you know, fair matches and stuff. Um, on all games like, say, uh, Gears of War, for instance, where I've seen ranked matches, um, all, all the ranked match really means on that is that it has, you know, like, track the leaderboard stat you can't bring guests in, but it doesn't actually match you up with someone of an equal skill so, um, yeah, it, it could just be, you know, people will search in a party of five, they, they could match up against, like, five random people searching, and obviously that's a really easy win. Whereas on mm. Halo 3, they they tried to make sure it was fair by putting up, you know, a team of four against another team of four. Um, if everyone was searching random, they'd come up against other people searching on their own. So, yeah, I thought that was really good how they um, monitored their ranks. Yeah, I think in Halo 3, the matchmaking system for ranked is very good, where how they monitor it, you know your ranks, and you will come up against other people who are level 40, if, say, you're level 40. Um, but I do think in the social, if you just want to go in social and play against like loads of different skilled people and not care about ranks, it shouldn't have a true skill, because it actually does have a true skill in social. It's just hidden, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. A lot of the times when, um, say, my friends would be around and they'd want to play Halo 3, um, they'd really be quite put off by it because obviously I've played social on the account and I would have won a lot of the game so in a social uh, point of view I was probably quite a high rank and when my friends would play um, they some of them had never played Halo before and their first games they'd be coming up against generals and stuff and we'd really never be able to get a match against anyone below a colonel which isn't very good for a beginner and also I think a lot of people would actually buy a game after playing around a friend's house and being like, oh, you know, this game's quite good. But if they get yeah, off foot straight away by the fact that they can't even, you know, get a single kill or score a flag, then that'll be really off-putting and they won't want to um, join in on the fun. Yeah, yeah, and I think what a lot of people did, especially um, montage makers, is that they would create brand new accounts so that they could go into social with a, a brand new sort of true skill and come up against all the really low-level players. And if it was just completely mixed, that's, that sort of thing wouldn't happen. 
Um, you, obviously, you'd have the odd general in the game. Say, if you went in at level one and you'd never played before, you could have one general on the other team or one general on your team or something like that. And that could possibly annoy you having these really high skilled players all the time in your games. But at the same time, um, it's a true representation of the population and how the game is, and it will help you get better. Um, and if you do want to just play at level one, then you can go into ranked and play at level one. Yeah, I would say. And if you do just uh, want to play at level fifty, go to, go into ranked and play at level fifty, sort of thing. Yeah, I would say that's that's definitely a, a key point to make the social ranking system. It just, um, yeah, if people want to match people of their own skill, it should be within the ranked playlist. Especially because the social, there are guests. So, um, yeah, having going in with guests and playing kind of a ranked playlist, even though it doesn't show the rank, is kind of off-putting because obviously those guests aren't ranked. So it could be like more than half the players in the game. You know, they're just sitting there on their friends' ranks when they've never played the game before. Um, also, on Call of Duty, there is no present ranking system. But I haven't really had many people complain about matching better people on Call of Duty. It just really seems that they play the game, get on with it, and if they, you know, if they think they've lost too much, they just leave at the end of the game and find a new lobby, and then hopefully it's better for them. Yeah. Yeah. True. Um, what do you think? So, so basically, you're saying that in Halo 4 they should have a ranked, a proper ranked system where they will show you your rank, like they did in Halo 3 and Halo 2. Um, and the social playlist should be just basically completely social and mixed, have no true, true skill at all. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I completely agree with that. All right. What, what do you think about um, maybe another playlist separate to the ranked and the social, where it doesn't even count towards your stats? Um, I think, I'm, I'm not sure how good an idea that would be, because obviously, um, you know, there's a lot of people boosting and stuff, but I don't think we should try and go around the problem. The best thing to do is tackle it, and, you know, um, try and um, ban these boosters or, you know, put precautions in the way so they can't do what they're doing. Hmm. Yeah, because that, that was a huge problem in Halo 3, and, I mean, and, and in Halo 2, even though your stats weren't tracked, as much as in Halo 3, people would the only people who were level 50s were people who had cheated, isn't it? Yeah, there was probably only um, a couple legit level 50s solely for the fact that um, at one point, you know, they just bun Bungie just weren't bothered to keep up with the amount of cheating that was going on. And yeah, so the, in, in that sense, ranks um, kind of died on Halo 3 because it became something like oh. A level 30 meant that you're actually quite good at the game, whereas on Halo 3, a lot of the top people won't really accept anything less than a 50. Yeah, yeah. And it, even if you were a level 50, it didn't necessarily mean you were good at the game. It could have mean that you bought your account, it could have mean that you boosted it, it could have mean loads, loads of different things. So it sort of meant nothing at the end. Um, so the two things that they need to do, I think, really, is to introduce a very strong ban hammer like they always promised they said they would well Bungie promised they said they would it's now 343 so if 343 got onto that and really right from the start made sure that people weren't manipulating connections uh, circle boosting things like that and the second thing is um, in Halo 3 a lot of people complained about how the ranking actually went up and down because in some cases you could win one game and rank up two levels and in some cases you could win 50 to rank up just once and if you lost you'd rank back down or if you tied with them you'd rank back down so the sort of true skill formula or equation whatever they've got I think didn't really work in Halo 3 Yeah, um, I think what, they, what, what one of the big problems with, was on Halo 3 was boosting, and it wasn't just necessarily people de-ranking accounts, but even if um, you're searching on a level 40 and you search at the level 1, it will be searching the lower 10 levels, so therefore giving you a much easier um, game. So even though this may restrict what people can do with their parties, I would say they should only do it to say 15 levels down and 15 levels above. Um, and if, you know, your friend isn't in that range, then he should, you know, have to catch up with you before he can um, play with you on your level 50 or whatever um, rank you want to search with them on. Because it really does um, make the game quite unfair, especially, say, um, a, lo a lot of the time someone would be a level 30 or something, and they would ask their level 50 friend, oh, can you go on this level 1 account and help me level up? 
and then that person would effectively just be carrying the whole team and getting them to a rank they don't deserve. Yeah, actually, I never thought about that, but that, that, that is probably pretty fair. I mean, um, if you want to play with a friend who's a completely different rank to you, maybe it's just best to go into social and play with them in social. Yeah, that's true. Like, um, if I'm searching ranked and uh, a few of my friends are asking me to play, a, a lot of the time it's the case that their rank is, let's say, 30 ranks lower than mine, and it's just a much better option to play social. But what if you have started a new account and you want to get to level 50 as quickly as possible, but all your friends are already at like level 45? Well, I suppose you sh if, if you are actually good enough to be at level 45, or if you're good enough to be at 50, then you should actually be able to get to a level 45 very quickly. Um, because, you know, if you win all of your games, I think if you're winning X amount of games in a row, the system should realise that and level you up quite um, quickly. Where, um, but mm. otherwise, say if you're um, winning intermittently, it should keep you within, the, within a similar range. Yeah, yeah, because um, actually at the moment you you get rewarded more for winning inconsistently. It's kind of strange, the Halo 3 system. So if you're um, sort of losing 40% of your games and winning 60% of your games on and off, um, you can rank up faster than someone who's winning 95% of their games consistently. Yeah, that's and true. It seems to um, lock you at the rank. And that's another reason why a lot of people are making accounts, because of the way the... Halo 3 ranking system was made, um, it seemed to be that you would level up according to who you're against and their win records and your own current win record, where I think each game should be unique in a sense. It shouldn't take past performance into judging how well you did on that specific game um, and how it's yeah, going to level you up, because that really holds people back, and that's a big reason why people... Um, 50 accounts, but I know a lot of people that were probably good enough to get a 50, but it's just the fact that they were stuck at like a level 48 as a brigadier, and they played thousands of games, and you know, they could win like 40 games in a row and still not level up. Hmm. Um, so I think, yeah, they could maybe move back to the system they had in Halo 2, where you could actually see on the Bungie website how much, how much sort of EXP or how many wins you were away from the next rank and if you lost your sort your bar went down if you won your bar went up yeah i think that um, was actually a very good um stat to keep track of really um they tried to do a similar thing on halo charts before it died but obviously that wasn't a true ranking system it was quite easy to get to 50 but at the same time it did have that progress bar there which you could see how close you were to you know getting that level 50 or whatever and you could kind of estimate how many games it would take you and if you lost how much it would set you back um, but yeah on um, Halo 3 it seemed to be quite random you could win like 15 games in a row and then lose one and level down so yeah I think that's um, something that um, 3 4 3 really need to look on hmm alright well we've got a few minutes left and um, I think we should talk about how they pick a host because that was one of the huge issues in Halo 3 I think on LAN, Halo 3 was an amazing game, but online people just used to complain about connection all the time. So what can they do better for Halo 4? Yeah, well I would say there's two directions they can go with this really. They could either go for dedicated servers, which obviously means that um, they wouldn't really be playing um, like Europeans against Americans, as they'd all be you know, searching for the local areas and the server works best. But at the same time, I suppose, um, some people like playing people from all over the country, especially in um, social. I actually have fun talking to people from different places and stuff. Um, I would say one of the best things they could do is make sure that ranked games, because they're very important, are on dedicated servers, and then have the social games just picked by a host system. But, um, yeah, the host system really needs to be improved upon, because on Halo 3, I actually knew um, even quite a lot of my friends, they had really bad broadband um, to say, but they would pull hosts like fairly often. Um, they would have like 1 MB downloads and even less of that as an upload, but they would still be pulling hosts. Hmm. Yeah. 
All right, well, um, I think we'll leave it there for this video. I mean, we can carry on this discussion later because there's quite a lot to say about host. Um, but we reached the 15 minute mark and coming up to the end of the video. Uh, so hopefully, if you want to check out the next video, we'll start talking about host a bit more, um, possibly the different playlists that we can have, and um, maybe forced armor in certain playlists, like in SWAT. I know a lot of people got annoyed by elites versus Spartans, so things like that. Um, but yeah, thanks, Hashem, um, and hopefully you can join me for the next video. All right. See you later, guys. Bye, guys.